Yeah. Here we go. Uh, another edition of Behind the Scenes, Making of. Let's stick out there. I say, well, brother, what are you talking about? Behind what scenes? The making of what? Hold on a second. Okay. DJ Spivey. I want to. Hey, did you notice? You see, I told you before we used to talk about this. I'm a child of a goon, but I didn't notice this. But this is a white thing. And I got a little blue. Well, a little blue. See, a goon's colors in, um, in Nigeria, well, Europe, is uh, blue. When it goes to, um, when it goes to Brazil, it's contemplate and it becomes blue and white. But then in America, it's, it's basically uh, green, um, black with a little bit of red. I ain't got no green here. Yeah, I'm black, but here's a little bit of red. I'm gonna uh, start from that. Put this back here. Okay, hey, look. I've been thinking, as I set up for the, the Instagram, it's the making of Instagram, right? And uh, just in case you want, you always see the smoke wafting. Well, I've got it down to a thing now because I, 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 when I come back and walk, I come through here, I light the incense, I go get the stuff, the stuff that I got to think with, and then I'm, you know, something like that. Um, but I was thinking, I'm going to talk about um, film today on Instagram. I was thinking, you know, the first, because, you know, in the morning, when I start with, um, I did my Rihanna thing, just like that, but then I went to uh, Nina Simone, New World Coming, this beautiful version I sort of like. Then um, Marvin Gaye, A Piece of Clay. Then, um, uh, then Valerie Simpson, Love Woke Me Up This Morning. I didn't do Prince, I didn't do uh, Love That Will Be Done. But, but let me say this. I always, from the beginning, when my, uh, you can consider this a normal, every, when you see me, you're thinking No More Radio. Don't worry about that part. But my first, my very first No More Radio I did, because they had, <laughs> the program director wouldn't let the program on air. I, you know, I had to propose, everything was fine, blah, 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 but he wouldn't let it on the air, right? Because well, we had a little tiff, right? Uh, we had a bigger tiff. But anyway, he went on vacation, and so the person that, that was acting, <laughs> acting program director, Giselle, who, who was in charge of the arts department, was basically in charge of me. She put me on the air. And when he came back, he, he couldn't say nothing. I guess he could have said something, but it would have been a big problem. Anyway, back to the point. So my first normal radio, unbeknownst to people, was I did this thing on Marcus Garvey. There was an exhibit of Marcus Garvey at uh, Schomburg. I went up there and did it. So my very first normal uh, was Marcus Garvey, which interesting was normal radio is a cultural, basically a cultural program, right? Okay. But the very first song I played was Marvin Gaye version of Nature Boy. Think about that. Think about that. Nature Boy is the first, first thing I play. I don't know if I play anything, but anyway. But since then, the two, the two people I always play, as you have to say, I'm a Marvin Gaye fanatic. You know, there's fans, fanatic. I'm a Marvin Gaye fanatic. And a lot of times I have a long association for a number of reasons. I'm going to worry about that part. With, uh, with Prince. Not with Prince, but with the, the certain thing happened with Prince. Right? And so people think that I'm a Prince fan. I'm not a Prince fan. I'm a Prince appreciator. Just like when, but, and then, then every time I, I go, like a Pan African Space Age, but any place, no more radio before, I always play on the program. Usually it's like a three hour program, two to three hours, right? I always play Marvin, always play Nina, Nina Simone. Because I am, I, I'm a Nina. So basically, Prince, I'm a, pre, I'm a Prince appreciator. Nina Simone, even though I play her all the time, I'm not a Nina Simone fan. I'm a Nina Simone appreciator. So most people I'm appreciator. I'm only a fan. I'm only a fanatic to one. <laughs> well, in music, would be uh, would be Marvin. Okay, now here's what happened. I had gotten this mango uh, sea moss. I got this mango sea moss from New York. And I, not that I forgot about it, but I haven't been. You know, I put it in, the, in my, my eat my water would have happened. I didn't really do it straight yet, but I did it straight this morning. I forget how many times. Let me do this. Hmm. What's still the usage? I think you can do it how many times a day? But it's so good. I don't care. With that. 
It's so good. Ingredients online. They don't tell you how much to do a day. But see, it's got to be refrigerated. I'm thinking of taking it with me. Put it in like a cooler bag. Take me as I travel to St. Louis. Having it in St. Louis, then I might travel to Canada. Cause so it was cold in Canada. I could just put it outside the window and take it with me. I'm thinking of doing that. I might do it. I like it. Man, it tastes good. Whoa. With Seamoss, I actually just put it in my mouth and then I, I sort of swallow it. I don't be, well, no. Oh, here's my Thich Nhat Hanh spoon. You know Thich Nhat Hanh? He just passed here. The, the monk, the, the Vietnamese monk that lived there, lived in France, but because they speak French. I mean, the Vietnamese. Because there was colonials. I, 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 but anyway. But he was the one that was nominated by um, Martin Luther King for Nobel for a prize, you know, Nobel Peace Prize. Oh well. Okay, so that's, that's, that's wasted enough time here. Let's get it on. But if, talk about first, and my first, well, this is important. Wow, it's, it's important to me. But my first uh, uh, live radio drama I did on air was um, Day of Absence, you know, Doug Ward, Douglas Turner Ward's Day of Absence. Um, because it was an accident happening. Anyway, so I did it, I just cut to the chase. I did it on air. But what I did, I did not change a word, not a word of the piece, right? I just cast it a little bit. But by casting, like the mayor of the town, he, he, he affected the voice of Ed Koch, because Ed Koch was the mayor of the town. Some other person, I had to affect the voice of Ronald Reagan, somehow he was in the mix. But you know, I had different voices, right? But I, did, but I didn't, like I said, didn't change a word of anything that Douglas Turner Ward did. Except, not except, no, the words remain the same. But what I did, I thought, I said, well, you know, when Doug wrote this play, he, there's one there's one black character at the end named Rastus, right? And uh, he, he he based it on uh, um, the Lincoln guy, um, Lincoln guy, um, uh, Step and Fetch it. He based it on Step, that was this biggest stereotype, you know, black stereotype, of the, you know, f from the, what, 30s, when Will, when Will Rogers, you know, roped him in, get that little thing. Um, because you know, there was no Will Rogers. There was no step in fashion. Will Rogers liked him. That's he's the one that you know. He's his white patron, whatever. But he was the biggest, highest paid black actor. Blah 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 blah. But anyway, so step in fashion. So I was thinking. Now this is the '80s. Remember, late '80s. I say, what's the biggest uh, black? Let's call step in fashion a comedian, right? C comic actor. A yeah, comic actor of the time that made a lot of money just like Step and Fetch it, the highest paid black comic actor at the time. Who would that be? Answer Eddie Murphy. So I said, okay. So now with uh, Yusuf Lamont could play like the voice of Eddie Murphy, right? And and and, and Michael Mayburn, well, Creative Unity is my core group, right? Uh, uh, Dark Neal, uh, Rodney Black. Michael Mayburn, uh, Yusuf Lamar, and then the, that's the four. But the beginning, we, by, by this time when we did this first thing, we had like eight. There was eight other, you know, Gilbert Giles, a bunch of some other people, right? And so, anyways, so what happened was at the end is at the end when Rasta shows up because they they've been going for a day, and the white people are so there's just two guys on the porch, you know, two old boys on the porch. So what I did was I I put one I I had two microphones. I put one up. And one down, right? And they had the microphones had different qualities, right? So what I had had Mike had my um, um, I started to say Harold Mabel. Harold Mabel is Michael Mabel's father. Passed peace and blessings on his eternal soul. Um, in fact, he did the, uh, the if you hear the early Crave Unity, if you hear the, the end thing, uh, 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 upright piano. That's Harold Mabel playing for the theme for Crave Unity. But just okay. so so what happened? So. When when Michael talked up to the mic, he was had, had a different voice quality. Plus, he could change his voice too. But if he talked down, he was a different one. So it sounded like two people. We do like that. Uh, Yusef was on another mic. Came his Rastas, right? As Eddie, but he used the Eddie Murphy voice. So in other words, if you read the play, it's like Ross, like step and fetch character. But if you evoke Eddie Murphy's voice, the same words, right? It was a whole. It was a, it was amazing. It was just toasted. It was, I think perhaps. I know I did a lot of audio dramas. And that was the real first one we did live in the station. It was all a lot of stuff around it. I used the entire station. But when I think about it, 
if I really think about it, non-critical at the end, it probably was the best audio drama giving all the ingredients done. Don't give me, it's not the most profound, but it's the best, you know, like that. Okay, <sighs> exhaust that, no. I'm just going to leave it to something else. Okay, so, oops, let me get this thing ready. Oh, well, I, I put, did y'all see I put, oh, y'all, I'm not talking to y'all, you're not Instagram yet. I posted this thing this morning, I was walking with the geese. Okay, here we go. So on my reel. Live. Excuse me. Ah, here we go. Must be there. I feel like taking another mango before I don't know one. I can't sound like a bird. Oh, hey, Instagram. It's me. T from the Pattersons taking their attention to bed. Whoa. Like, I'm going to talk about film today. Well, I'm going to talk about film. Yeah. Question. What's the most revolutionary film, or I should say, accessible revolution, film on revolution or revolutionary film or film on revolution that you know of, right? Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, like uh, uh, Z or uh, uh, the state of Z, they're going to say, or the, what's that one? Um, they're going to say a lot of, you know, a lot like Burn. They're going to bring up Burn, right? Uh, there's there's, there's some, some films out there, right? But the most accessible, accessible the one that you know you wouldn't realize it was a a, rev a film on revolution unless unless she was talking to me which you're talking well i'm talking to you right now you know what that film is you ready for this i'll give you a hint it's written by an english woman a british woman an english woman i uh, still not no clue yet okay okay don't worry about it. uh and we're talking including uh things like um What's that one that everybody said? What well, not say? Everybody say, uh, uh, Battle of Algiers. Even more profound than Battle of Algiers. Let's say, prof yeah, more profound than Battle of Algiers. I'm, I'm waiting. Well, let's didn't say profound. Profound's the wrong word to use. I'm waiting. Okay, written by an English woman, right? Directed by an expatriate, well, ex from England, uh, uh, English man, right? Big time director. Big, big, big time director. The most, on, and I should say, on black revolution. Oh, now we're getting deep. You said this is a revolution. On black, we mean like black for black people? Yes. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Hold on to your seat. The, like this comes from like Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Who has he's supposed to have this this uh, list of films? You know, that's, that's, that's is on his website. I never really checked it out, right? But you know, his era goes to whatever his era goes to. So I I picked this era because it's like, well, anyway, let me go to this. You ready? Now remember, the big thing about black revolution, everybody's scared of black people, black men especially, right? And so what they do, let me straighten this out just a bit. So what they do is they, they fear, they're fearful of black men, you know? So anytime they, something happens, we're, we're moving, they think that we're going to, how do you say, uh, destroy them, you know? Uh, basically, it's going to be a fight, and, we, and black men are going to win, and then what we're going to do, we're going to do to the the uh, people who oppress us like they did to us. You know what I mean? So that's what they're really afraid of. All the dirt they done did. All the dirt they done did. Right? They're afraid that if we, we, the royal we, black people, I shouldn't say the royal, uh, black people take over, then we're going to do to them as they did unto us. Right? Treat us fair, unfairly, you know, abuse, you know, da 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 da. But it's not to say black people just not like, wait, you know, just because you did this, we say, okay, yeah, 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 all oh, right, hey, just don't do it no more. That's what we usually do. <laughs> well, maybe we don't do that. <laughs> okay, you ready? You ready now? Okay, here we go. Now, I'm, I want you to remember, remember this because at the end of the film, it's the key. The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock's directed The Birds. The Birds is one of the most revolutionary films ever made with the theme of black men or black people. Now, but brother, you done lost your ever loving. Hey, first of all, you know, I know film, okay? So just stop. Yeah, you don't know film. You just, uh, uh, you probably shut up. Okay? Because one of the reasons, because remember when it first starts out, there's these two lovebirds in a cage. And the woman, you know, basically purchases, takes a purchase of the lovebirds from the, from the, you know, let's call it from, uh, 
from the, from the continent, from, from the cave. And then she's with the lovebirds bringing it overseas, over the water body, to this island, to this place, right? Like that. And so then all the stuff's happening because the birds start attacking the woman because she got the lovebirds in the cage. They got cage, 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 black people cages, like that. They got that's what they got happening to have, right? And so all the all the drama happens throughout the whole film and da 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 the people die, you know, all the rest of the stuff. And then at the end, really, the birds there's like you see nothing but birds. And the white people are surrounded because, you know, that's the way it really is. You know, it's more white there's more black people, more or as Mr. Neil, well, I want to say what Mr. Neil, Neil would say, like that. But what do they do? The birds, they didn't beat up on the, on the white, on the colonizers, right? They say, okay, now you you know what's going to happen if you try this again. Yeah, go, yeah, just, okay. And they're sneaking out. Da, 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 da. What's happened? What happened? Think about it, right? The black people, the victorious black people, let the white people say, okay, now you understand, we won, or you know, you can't do this no more. Out of here, let them out. Did not harm them. Let them out after the battle. Let them go. What was the statement? The statement is like what I say, like Mangalisa Robert Sabuke would say. You know, in terms of a uh, 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 African or Black revolution, it's like that. Hey, I want you to remember, this could happen. We're not going to do anything to you, right? But for you to exist on this island with us, you have to know love. You have to know justice. If you ain't into justice, right? If not, in, if you're not into justice, uh, if you're not into uh, love and peace, then you can't be on this continent. You got to be something else. You, you there? You want to be up there with you, Ukraine or with with, with that? You want to be over there with DT or you want to be? You can go there, but as long as you're in Africa, we don't tolerate that. That's it. That's the birds. See? Then, oh, one more thing. Since I'm on film, one more thing. I got to do every time I do film. Please, I beseech thee. I figure if I do the English thing, that there will, there, there will be more response. If you, you do this to black America, then nobody going to listen. I beseech thee. Can I take this to uh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson, right? Please, brother. I hope I not say brother because they, they never fulfill your thing when you say brother. Well, I'll try. Brother, think about it. Here's what you need to do. We need to remake Putney Swope. You know what I'm talking about. Don't make like you don't know. Putney Swope came out in 69 or 68, whenever it came out. Well, I, just, I guess it was 69 because we were filmed. I was an extra in the film. So it's 68. I guess we filmed it in 68, something like that. Anyway, I say we. I, mean, I was an, Like I said, I was an extra. But if I was going to recast, Samuel L. Jackson would be Putney Swope, right? I'm just going to give a few hints, right? Uh, because D Dave Chappelle would be in the film, right? But he plays another pivotal role. But he would be, uh, uh, there's a there's a scene where there's these guys at the bar, the young guy at the headband like that. And he says, where's the bread? Give us the bread. That's all his lines, give us the bread at the bar, right? It's like people now are saying, you know, cut the check, cut the check. So that's Dave Chappelle part. Don't worry about it. We'll get back to him some other time, right? It's just one little part. He comes He comes at the end, the end credits again. But Putney, Putney uh, Samuel L. Jackson is the main character. The next main character, the next outstanding character would be uh, in a film is called um, the, the Arab, right? But I would recast that. The Arab, the Arab was played by uh, Antonio Fargas, all right? So you know. Dan Fargas, Huggy Bear, you know him from that, okay, right? But I would replace him, who would play that Arab part, right? Ready? Cat Williams. Look, remember, I'm a director, right? What's the director's job? You just cast. You cast, you cast right and everything else. I can cast this thing. No, I don't want no parts. Oh, I, I do want a part. I just want to be an extra. Be uh, There's a scene where uh, but the, uh, Putney Swope was on the balcony asking for suggestions and one of the people says, I got, uh, dun, 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 face off, something like that. And it's, the actor's name, well, it's part of England, some of the companies called uh, uh, David Downing, but he couldn't use the name David Downing because because Robert Downing Sr., a prince, was the was the director. He didn't want to confuse anything. But he went to deliver that line. I was standing right next to him. You see the dashiki. And the out and the, if you go to the wide shot, you actually can see my face if you know who I is, right? So I was in that thing. So if they redo it, I just want to be an extra next next to that guy doing that line. I don't want no lines because 
because you know it gives somebody else a chance you know the actors union whatever have that's want to be an extra do like that right but here's the other thing about that right cat williams right but here's what i would do uh would to, to play the the what robert downey senior wrote would be the same thing right the only thing i would do at the end when he when he walks out with the money right we uh he walks out that ends the that ends the, the movie Right, they they burn, burns, but stuff is burning. Doesn't don't worry about it. You see the movie, you see what I'm saying. But then I have end credits. In the end credits, the cat, well, pardon me, spoke, who walks out with the money. And remember, the Arabs left to do whatever he's doing, and he has a circle of boys. One of them being, one of them would be Dave, the Dave Chappelle character who plays with the. Well, they would go in the end credits. You see them. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take some of this money. We're going to support, like say, bloggers, people that do that. that. We do it anonymously. We're going to use this money over here. We're going to use this money for this liberation, like that. So basically, at the end, Putney Swope becomes is a revolutionary. He just doesn't take the money, but he applies it to things that's going to. Uh, I shouldn't say revolutionary. Things that's going to alter the system in our favor. That's the film. That's what I want to see. Come on, hey, you know, hey. Like I said, I don't you know, give me no credit. Yo, t- we'll steal the idea. Go steal it, steal it, steal it. I just want it done, right? Samuel L. Jackson, Cal Williams as the Arab. Oh, Buddy Butler, who played, there was a guy that big afro and he lost his gun or whatever happened. Buddy Butler is still, as far as I know, he's still with us, right? I think he teaches at San Francisco, not San Francisco, down there in Southern California, have him in the movie. He could be the, he could be the, uh, there's an old guy that's, that's with the thing. He, he, says, he always says, uh, uh, he says stuff anyway. An old guy who, oh, he could be the, he could be the guy. I think he was say, oh yeah. Uh, Putney says the woman's gotta have soul. Putney says gotta have soul. Maybe he'd be that character because he's older now. I don't know. I can ca- look. I'll tell you what. If you're going to do it, uh, I, I do want to be paid. Cause this, no, that's not me being paid. I want to pay because I'm because of the hut house that, that we our, our community center that we have in Dumbaza. If you don't pay me, we give it that money. So the money, I would help the casting director cast. That's what I would do. Because you'll want to come down to South Africa to film a little bit anyway. So, you know, I'd be there, you know, cat, do, 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 do. I got a million ideas. Oh man, my goodness. I'm be, okay, um, I talk too long. I gotta let y'all go. I'll see y'all later. Bye, be well, see you. Oh, what happened there? Oh, what did I do wrong? What did I do? Oh, I did it live. Oh, I don't think I got all that in. Oh, well, I guess I will. I guess I will. What happened? Uh, Let's create. Maybe it did go live, but it just didn't record. I went for there. Then I went and did that. I did live. I came on live. But when I did the thing, maybe the live is different. Maybe they're the real. I don't know what. I tell you what. I just posted like that because you all heard the whole thing, right? I just won't do it. I do. I got to. I, I might see uh, what's name later. So I'll go. If this didn't go up like that, then what I will do. Yeah, it didn't go. Well, I don't know. I don't know what happened. What I do, I'm supposed to go to the movies today to see Wakanda again. Wakanda, Wakanda forever again, right? Let's see, if I do that, I just post the Instagram for that. It won't be a, a done live. Ah, ah. Anyway, that's it. I'll let you all go. You know, oh, this thing was skewed too. Man, I'm losing my thing, man. This morning. Let me have some more. Let me have some more mango. Oh, it's so good. I'll check y'all later.